Loki, uh, our, our dog, has got a cancer diagnosis. Um, we haven't gone to the oncologist yet. We're that's uh, Friday morning, um, but yeah, it's it's kind of thrown everything all the way off over here. Yeah. Um, he's he's got a a, a two, we we saw it on the X ray. He's got a tumor between his spine and his colon. We're not sure <laughs> where where it's low what where it's being generated from. I guess. Um, we don't know, um, surgery seems unlikely, but we don't know, um, maybe chemo or something, whatever. We're, we're going to have to see what the prognosis will be. I've, I've been taking care of him at the moment. Um, we just had to drop, drop $200 on ramps because where it's located, he, he, he's having oh, yeah, his, mobility issues. Yeah. His, his back legs are a little weak now. We so, had that with Miracle. Her back end just would give out. So we had to get um, ramps, $200 in ramps, and he doesn't want to use them because he's like, 9QI stairs, which dog we, we just spent a lot of money on these i the one for we, i got a ramp to get him onto the bed it's a nice yeah. ramp it's like we got we got miracle stairs to get up and down off the bed but she she would only come up onto the bed from one side and go down off the bed what the heck was that Nice. Oh, down the other side. So we ended up having to buy a second set of stairs. So we had an up staircase and a down <laughs> staircase. Loki, I've been trying to teach him to use the ramp to take it easy on his legs. And so I would like lead him up the ramp, and when he got up up the ramp, I would give him cookie. Yeah. Well, now if one of us is watching. He will stay at the bottom of the <laughs> stairs until we come down, lead him up the ramp, and give him a cookie. But if we're not watching, he'll just come right up the stairs. He he doesn't. I love it. Well, him. at least he's still feeling well enough to be contrary. He's, he's stubborn. He's a very stubborn. We got we got him we we got him a ramp for the bed. He doesn't want to use. It. It's a very nice ramp. It's it's it, it goes all the way up. It's got a little platform at the top, so you know it doesn't just drop off. He doesn't want to use it because us. Yeah. He wants to, he wants to jump, and that's that's not. not gonna work, but, it's yeah. not animals shouldn't be allowed to get cancer. It's not fair. No, it's not. But we'll uh. Should be illegal. I want to talk to the manager. We'll we'll see what the oncologist says, and we'll just we'll go from there. I don't, I don't know yet. We're just you know, yeah. It's a thing. So, all right. Anyway, just because terrible things are happening doesn't mean stupid things aren't also happening. And today, mir wow, what a. You think you think you've, have you think you've ever had a bad day at work? One dude yeah. has had the worst day at work in the world. Literally the worst day at work in the entire world. Let's get the intro going. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible things. Bring it back here for a little segment. We like to call what the fuck is wrong with you. Um we we've in order to make sure we get trade and commerce from one place to another we have said fuck you oceans and we've dug ditches just great big we, we call them canals they're great big fucking ditches is what they are um we have dug ditches to allow boats to go where they they were not supposed to go before and this is all in well and good, and boat go from one place to another, and everything wonderful. Until today, and this is this is so bad because this canal, the Suez Canal, th this one and the Panama Canal are one of two of the most vital uh, place ways of getting things from point A to point B. And someone jammed a big fat ass right in the middle of it, just. 
plopped the fucking boat. No, it's the wrong one. We'll get to that one later, but I'm going to give you the right one there. There you go. We'll get there. You go. Yeah, plop the boat right the hell the middle in the Suez Canal. Um, I want to know how that happens. Eight tugboats are working to free a large container ship stuck in Egypt's Suez Canal, halting marine traffic to one of the busiest and most important waterways in the world. Rescue boats are working to float and release the ever given a 193.5 foot or 59 meter wide vessel that ran aground after uh, winds and a sandstorm to cause low visibility and poor navigation. This dude, whoever was driving the boat, is it it's piloting or driving or nav whatever, whoever was driving the boat just had the worst day yeah. at his job or her job or their job. And it's continuing to have the worst day because the boat's still stuck. Yeah, it's. And to show you just how fucked up the course of, of the uh, the boat was. Here is the, the uh, navigation tracker for the boat picked up the, the, the law and this. He the boat accidentally drew a dick that that's how thrown off course they were. That is some serendipity right there. Just another way dicks are ruined in the world. <laughs> I, I just I look forward to your comment. So right now they are doing because this waterway is so vital because everything has to yeah. go in and out of there, including a lot of oil. Um, They are doing every goddamn thing to get this fucking boat out the fucking way. They have all of the tugboats there. They are digging along the sides of the the. Uh, Oof. Of, of the canal to widen it. Uh, they may start offloading cargo to try and lighten the boat. Um, Have they considered blowing it up? <laughs> mm. Tara, Tara, Tara. This isn't a whale, just, Tara. Just fuck it. <laughs> Can you give me shit? <laughs> We've been married for five years now. This is what happened. Uh, so it, it's, yeah, this this is kind of a big deal. Can you imagine? This is like a traffic jam in yeah. the Suez Canal. Everybody who's, th there is no reverse no. in the Suez. So if you are in the fucking canal, you're in the fucking canal. So everybody's stuck until this is fixed. Just sitting there. I, I, can you imagine if we were doing this shit without Wi-Fi? So without if the Funko Pop you ordered <laughs> does not ship in a timely fashion, <laughs> calm your tits. It's going to be a while. It's very weird how we can just snarl up global trade with one ditch. <laughs> it's a glorified ditch. Don't, don't, don't pretend like it's not. That's a canal is just a really fancy ditch. Oh my God. I just, I, I, every, the, that dude is so mortified that, well, I say, I keep saying, dude, that person, yeah. they, they are so mortified driving that boat. The, and you know, like in the boat person community, they're never living this down. No. This is the rest of your career. You got, you, your you, nickname you, is Suez. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, that's that's what's going. It's I'm still I'm still just dying over the fact that just randomly penis. Just suddenly penis is standing beside you. Well, let's uh, let's move on to uh, Taiwan. And do I still have lipstick on my teeth? It feels like I do. Sorry. <laughs> You know, we, we like to pretend that doing stupid things in the name of consumerism is a uniquely uh, American trait, but it's not. It, it's a worldwide thing. 
Um, it's a human tree. Yeah. Yeah, and this this is a good example of that. Taiwan urges citizens not to change their name to salmon to get free sushi. Sushi is a favorite meal for many people around the world, but some residents in Taiwan are going to extraordinary lengths to get their hands on free by offering uh, promotion by officially renaming themselves salmon to take advantage of a restaurant promotion. Taiwan's Ministry of the Interior stepped in on Wednesday and urged people to think carefully before changing their names after a surge in applications. According to the country's name act, people are entitled to do so just three times, meaning in theory, someone can end up stuck with a name. Almost 100 people have registered to change their name as part of the promotion by the restaurant chain Sushiro. Um, I'm, I'm assuming that's like Sabaro, but for sushi. Um, which runs until the end of two of Thursday. That was a joke. I know it's not like Sabar. It was a fucking joke. Fucking YouTube. It's a fucking joke. God damn it, YouTube. Well, actually, it's more like, yeah. On, mo on Monday, the chain announced it would give away free sushi to anyone whose name included the characters that together mean salmon. That person, plus up to five guests, could get a meal for free so long as they prove their name change using official ID. It is what? Oh, shit. No, Skype. Skype. Don't you do it. You back? Oh, hi. Fucking Skype. We are getting off this. I yes. swear to God, this week. Fucking. Duh. Anyway. So, uh, in a Facebook post, Susira said it would offer lesser discounts to anyone who added just one of the characters to their name as part of the promotion. Um, so, yeah, people are are legally changing their name to Salmon. And if for, this I don't, is for one meal, not like free sushi for life. No, one meal. A meal. And apparently in Taiwan, you only get to change your name three times. Is sushi a lot more rare in Taiwan than it is here? No. No. This is I can't. Like, there are foods I really fucking like, but I don't think I would change my name to get it for free one time. Yeah, this, this is... Th like, if they were like, you can have free flan for life, I would have to think about it, and I would probably still say no. One guy changed his name to Salmon Dream Cheng and can't change it back because he used up his name changes. <laughs> that's that's thing, just your name now. That's the thing that's throwing me in that Taiwan's like, you can only change your name three times. It's like, so in order to do this, people had to change their name once to Salmon, then change it back, and then they have one right. left. But who is this dude who's changed his name so many times he can't change it back? I just can't get over this is over one meal a meal yes well you went up to five friends okay but one time well yeah but if your five friends also change their name to salmon you're eating for a week that's still not fucking worth it <laughs> I, don't, I don't know i don't know what changing your name like is like in other countries but i have had to change my name twice because i got married and then i got divorced and when i married this fella here i was like just so you know i'm not changing my fucking name ever a fucking gay yeah yeah because i'm still getting mail in my first married name it's been like a decade yep so i was just like i hope that doesn't i hope that doesn't offend you never doing it again Never doing that paperwork again. It is such a, because every time you think you've changed everything, something, we just got a bank account that I closed 10 years ago that sent me a check in a name I can't use to cash it because I don't have any identification in that name. So just think you could be chicken gordita dean. Every time you think you've changed everything, <laughs> I mean, I could be chicken gordita dean <laughs> But why? You know how, like, back in, like, this is people, we're, we're, I'm going to be dating myself so badly here. Remember how, like, we were high school, everyone was fucking named Jennifer? Yeah. 
I'm not even I'm not even exaggerating. I don't I don't know what the name for this generation is, but when we we were in fucking high school, everyone was we had like five fucking Jennifers in my fucking high school. It's gonna be like everyone now is all the girls now are Madison. Madison and all okay. the boys are Aiden. Okay. Yeah. Madison. Or st- Jackson with an X is popular. That's that's isn't that the dude from Mortal Kombat? Anyway. Mm-hmm. Um so yeah, all the kids remember how Jennifer it's gonna be like Taiwan. They're gonna have a bunch of people from the entire generation named Su- named Salmon. Yeah. Gonna have kids going I don't, to- I don't know. Have you ever read the book or seen the movie The Lovely Bones? No. Because that's the main character's name. Her name is Susie Salmon. And she says, My name's Salmon, like the fish. Like she could get the free sushi, except that she's dead. <laughs> That's not a spoiler. She dies in the first chapter. <laughs> she can get the sushi, except she's dead. Uh, all right, moving on. So we've one thing we we've seen like last week. We even had dude robbed a a bank with an air gun. Yeah, uh, we we've seen this quite often using fake guns as real guns. That's a typical thing, which is weird considering how easy it is to get guns in this stupid country. Um. But this is this one was kind of new. This is a bit of a twist on that one. Um, it, it all right. I don't know how far back you remember. This started with laser tag. If you remember, this was a stupid fucking thing. Um, apparently the guns in laser tag looked too real, and I don't know if you've yeah. seen those old laser tag guns. They did not look like real guns, no. but they looked too real. So. We change product safety rules in America, so all toy guns have to be brightly colored to indicate they are not a real weapon. To be honest, I'm cool with that because a 12 year old kid got fucking murdered by the cops. Well, with a toy gun. So I'm cool with that rule. Well, Glock pistol disguised as toy Nerf gun seized in North Carolina drug raid drug raid in North Carolina turned up narcotics, cash, and plenty of guns, including a semi-automatic pistol well-disguised as a Nerf toy gun. And we're not, I'm not kidding, when, they're not kidding when they say well-disguised. Look at that shit. Um, the Glock Model 19 pistol with a 50-round drum magazine was painted blue and orange and had a Nerf logo similar to the toys made by Hasbro that fire foam darts. Catawba County Sheriff's Office said in a Facebook post that while the gun was routinely seized during searches involving narcotics, firearms of this type, while not illegal to possess, somehow are concerning to law enforcement. I, uh, I honestly can't believe nobody's thought of this before now. They have. Have they? Yeah. Like, it hadn't occurred to me, but as soon as you read it, I'm like, that's so fucking obvious. Why... And th- they went through a lot of trouble for this yeah. shit. They like airbrushed the fucking Nerf logo on. Th- that's just, they're not fucking around there. These are definitely buffer LARPers. <laughs> <laughs> Have uh, you seen the fucking detail some buffer LARPers put into their weapons? Yeah. I used to have a shield that had fucking Celt- Celtic knotwork stenciled on it because the <laughs> guy that made that shit was legit. These are buffer LARPers. This, this is, I, I mean, I, I guess I thought the, I, I think the idea here is if someone saw him with the gun, they'd think he had a Nerf gun and they wouldn't take it. Yeah. The, the other side of that coin though is when you want to crime with that gun, you're not going to intimidate your target. Yeah. You, in order to crime with that gun, you've got to murder someone. So yeah. you you kind of because if you your... try and hold up the bank with that gun, they're going to be like, really? And then really? And then you've got to like put someone in the ground. So you've really painted yourself into a corner. Yeah. With with this little camouflage here. Yeah. You you're in a must murder situation now, and I, that's never where you want to be. I fuck me, man. Dude thought he was all. I mean, that's a lot of work went into that shit. Yeah. Dude thought he was all clever and shit. I mean, I admire the craftsmanship. It's just, it's, it's fucking terrible. Um, 
Investigator sees 20 guns, quantities of cocaine, psilocybin mushrooms, marijuana, and 2300 in cash. <sighs> Jesus Christ. Were all the guns painted like that? I guess just the one. Just the one. Damon Alonzo Birch, 35, was charged with felonious possession of cocaine and mushrooms and misdemeanor possession of marijuana. Note that not one of those charges was for having the fucking guns. Merca. Merca. Yeah. It's, 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 it's more, more illegal to have mushrooms than, uh, the word felonious sounds a lot more fun than it really is. Yeah. <laughs> is that, like that sounds like it should mean something funner. It does, doesn't it? And it, it, it what it means is you've committed a felony, stupid. Yeah. Um. Oh, speaking of stupid, this one's from Pennsylvania. Oh my god. This is not the first time this has happened. This keeps happening. I, I, I forget. We used to have people keeping score of this shit. We. This keeps goddamn happening. Um, this is like easily, I think, at least the third time. Um, Center County McDonald's almost scammed out of $4,000. Now listen to this. Just Jesus Christ. State police say they are investigating a scam where a McDonald's manager was contacted and told to remove several thousand dollars and put them on local convenience store gift cards. State police at Rockview. Wallar sheets. <laughs> That's important. <laughs> <laughs> hey, please, Rob, you said an individual claiming to be a CEO for McDonald's allegedly, allegedly directed a manager at the restaurant to remove $4,000 and go to sheets and rudders to purchase. Are we gift sure cards. it wasn't John Fetterman? <laughs> individual told the manager to scratch the pin off the back of the gift cards and provide them over the phone. The CEO of McDonald's is going to call you and ask you to take $4,000 out of the till at your store. Yeah. And go buy Sheets gift cards. The CEO of McDonald's can probably afford to go to Sheets on his own. Yeah. That's. This is this is one of those what does God need with a starship situation? Yeah, that's, um, I mean, they there was a story. What was it? A Burger King like ten years ago that they like held the staff hostage. No, that was McDonald's. Was it? No, and, no. Convinced, and they made a movie about it because they convinced these people to do all kinds of horrible shit based on just the illusion of authority. Like, psychologically, if you can convince someone that you're an authority figure, they'll do some terrible, fucked up shit. But, if, okay, I'm just trying to figure out the mindset. There's one, you're a manager at a McDonald's. Yeah. Not to shit on the job, it's a hard job working fucking yeah. retail, but you're a manager at a McDonald's. One of millions. And you're just sitting around there waiting for the day when the CEO, you are so convinced of your own position in the world that when the CEO of McDonald's contacts you, you're like, damn right. Yeah. I, he uh, needs my help. Person, He's like that guy in Iron Man three, Tony Stark needs my help. <laughs> that doesn't usually happen in real life. No. Like no, Bezos no. is never coming to you and no. being like, I need you. No. The C I've also never, I've worked a lot of retail and service industry jobs, and I've never worked one of those jobs where there isn't a picture of the CEO somewhere. Here, here's the best part. Not, not only was the manager a bit, a little dim, but state police said they were able to contact representatives from the convenience stores where the transactions were able to be canceled and reversed. So not only was the, the person who, 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 complied a little dim the thieves were a little dim because now they have yeah. nothing now you got nothing Un until, except if they use one of the fucking things that's like you know fucking great big glowing dot on the on the map it's like hey yeah. look here they are you're, you're not going to be able to buy shit and you're going to jail 
Because you and every it. sheets employee now has a list of those gift card yeah. numbers on the till. Yeah. Just in case. So this is no one profited here. No, Everyone was, someone probably is losing their job. Yeah, losing the yeah, losing the job. Some people are probably going to jail. This is just everybody. This was a ter- this, you wasted Nobody everyone's went. time. Every yeah, yeah, everyone got their time wasted by this. Everyone, you wasted. You have wasted Sheets' time. You have wasted McDonald's time. You've wasted the police time. God damn it! Stop yeah. fucking everybody. Big waste of time. Uh, speaking of big waste of time, this is from Florida. Um, now, now you're going to think from this headline that some nefarious shit happened. But I assure you, no, no, it didn't, because we're talking about it on this show. This is not the nefarious shit show. <laughs> this is the regular shit show. Felonious shit. But not nefarious. No, no. Um, woman missing for several weeks found naked in Delray Beach storm drain. That does sound like sounds, the beginning of a Netflix series. Sounds fucking nefarious, right? But no, it's this show. A South Florida woman is recovering in the hospital after she was found naked and stuck in a storm drain. A woman identified as Lindsay Kennedy was reported missing nearly three weeks ago by her boyfriend. Keep that in mind. Three weeks. Um, this is by far one of the most bizarre incidents that our officers has responded to, said uh, Delray Beach Police Department Public Information Officer Ted White. A big ass title in there. Um, a passerby heard something coming from the storm drain. She heard a woman yelling. When first responders arrived, they discovered Kennedy trapped eight feet below the roadway. Um, now, now here, here we go. After she was rescued, Kennedy told detectives she'd gone swimming in a canal near her boyfriend's home. That's already a big strike one. Why are you swimming in a Florida canal? That, that's like all of the diseases. But she, and alligators. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. She <laughs> came across a doorway in that canal, which led to a tunnel. Which she followed and followed, crawling and squirming for day until she ended up at the storm grate where she was rescued. Why did you go in the door? Exactly. That's that's OK. So you're swimming along in a fucking Florida canal, which is our, that, that the only way you could get me to do that is like if like I was being chased by something terrible. Like if one of my cats was at the other side in yeah. danger, yeah. that'd Amanda, be about it. For a small child, yeah. You're already so you're already in a terrible spot. Did she find penny buys down there? Yeah. You're already in a terrible fucking spot. But what you're doing for fun for some reason. And you look and there's oh, there's a door. That shit's not taking you to Narnia. No. That's taking you to actual shit. You know the you know the bad lip reading of the Avengers called Redneck Avengers? Yes. <laughs> Your best case is it's taking you to Redneck Narnia, and you don't want any part of Redneck Narnia. <laughs> so now now here's the next part. While police said there are still many unanswered questions, there are just fortunate ones found in an area no human should be found. Um Police believe the woman may have disappeared March 3rd. That's when she was reported missing. For her to say she was in the storm drain for weeks is kind of hard to believe. We're trying to piece the story together to find out what is fact and what is not fact. So, to make it even weirder, she's been missing for three weeks. But she's only been in the storm drain for a few days. What the fuck happened here? No pun intended, but that sounds fishy. There's, there's some shenanigans going on. I don't even want to know. But there was this clown who gave me balloons. Like, no. she hooked up with her gator boyfriend <laughs> and accidentally got knocked up and had to go to the under underwater abortion clinic and then needed a story. 
This, this is getting kind of dark, Tara. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I mean, God, how the... What the... What? What? what I the, mean, I wouldn't want to birth gator human hybrids either. What in the fucking... What? How? What? Yeah, something... There's, there's, there's a... There's a blank in the I middle mean, of that story. If I was like, if I was like 12, I might see like a door leading to the fucking sewers and go, ooh, neato. Not you? No. I guess I was a dumber 12 year old than you. I, I was and remain afraid of everything. So I never wanted to do cool adventurous shit as a child. Because I was too fucking terrified <laughs> to do cool adventurous shit. Well, I wouldn't even do. I wouldn't even try and do a backflip in the moon belts because <laughs> that might not be safe. That's the kind of child I was. Well, speaking of not safe, we got one last one this week um, from a wing stop. Of all the fucking places to, to not even a Pizza Hut, a wing stop. I didn't know they still had these. Um, this is from uh Antelope. I believe this is California. Um and we got video. Let's uh let, let's let's get that on now, shall we? We we've got we've got video. Let's have a look. A violent reaction to a restaurant order led to chaos at a wing stop in Antelope over the weekend. The wings were supposed to be fiery, not the customers. Oh, hi, Grady. <laughs> he just like, shoved his face in a frame like, hello. <laughs> Cell phone video shows. Oh, here we go. Here he goes. And there it goes. That that's the register. And that's the window, and that okay. There, there it goes. <laughs> Crazy, really? Right? Did you... There we go. Oh, we, all we, all we had. We the, the moon came out early tonight. Looked like right there for a second. Um, <laughs> in a video captured by witnesses, a man could be heard yelling, uh, "I don't want the food." I don't have time to wait on the food again. So now what do we do? Um, you hear the employee tell the man, it's either you get the food remade or you're going about your day and stop yelling at my other manager because no. Um, Theron Truillo, a customer at the store at the time, recorded the man grabbing the register, slamming it to the ground twice before throwing it out the window. Um, they were heard the man say the restaurant gave him the wrong order twice. The register went through the window. He says he was surrounded by glass. Okay, look. Manager of the wing stop said he claimed he was missing several wings and wanted a refund. Not allowed on co company policy for online orders. Okay. Regulars at the restaurant who have experienced order issues in the past say they were stunned by the reaction. I, I mean, okay, look. If I was having a problem with my order, if they fucked up my order twice at the store, you know what I do? I just I wouldn't come back. Yeah, I might. I might. If I was feeling really frisky, I would leave a bad Yelp review or some shit. Yeah. Like, I, I don't think I would wreck the joint. I would probably just not eat there again. Yeah, because now what you now you're going to prison. Yeah, people are, are mentioning here, just open up a dispute with your credit card company, complain on Twitter. Yeah, these are yeah. all viable options. Not smashing the fucking window with the money, because now... You're not getting your wings, for sure. Yeah. Um, $6,000 to replace the register, and they're still waiting on a quote to fix the window. Anything over $950 is considered felony vandalism. So guess what? <laughs> You, you 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 had you fucking hulked out. I hope it felt good because you know where they don't have wings. Prison. Prison. Prison doesn't have. Prison doesn't have wings. They they don't they don't do wings. They, they, I mean they don't even do like you know like there are no prison wings. There's no like you know people cooking like little pigeon wings on on a, on a radiator. They don't even do that. 
That's not even a thing. You shouldn't eat them. You shouldn't eat them. (sighs) I I just... How is this going to solve your problem? Five wings over five fucking chicken wings. Five. Like, we've ordered from places around here that have messed up the order more than once. Like, one time I didn't get my french fries. One time he didn't get something. And you know what we did? We just stopped ordering from there. It, 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 I have I have actually I have been in public before when people have done these gone over the top not quite this over the top but they've gone over the top in stores there's suddenly there's just this vibe in the air that yeah. like everything your gut just knots up and you're like I don't want to be here I can just I never imagine had someone go off to this degree I did have a woman yell at me that I had stolen her credit card because I was in cahoots with her ex-husband's new wife Really, she was drunk and had dropped her credit card in the restaurant across the street. Um, but she spent a good long time yelling at me about how I was trying to sabotage her because I was friends with her ex-husband's new wife. And I'm like, bitch, I don't know you. I don't know your ex-husband. I don't care. I mean, yeah. It, it, you, you are going to get screwed over at retail sometimes. It's not going to yeah. go your way. You just, you have fucking welcome to the fucking capitalist world. A fast food, like sometimes they're just gonna fuck it up. That's just life. Yeah, you you have remedies that don't involve busting shit up. I don't. I, how do you not grow out of that? I don't know. Because America, there are some there are some dudes who are proud that they don't grow out of that shit. Yeah. Oh yeah. Which baffles me, but now now you're going you, to you you can you can find them just by saying, "Hey, could you pull your mask over your nose?" Hmm. Okay, so this this quote here, Jennifer Johnson, who lives in the area, believes, "Hangry or not, the destruction goes too far." All right, listen to this quote. This is killing me here. That's crazy. I mean, wings are important. Trust me. I love to eat, but it's not important. Wait, what? 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 I'm I, confused as to your thesis. I have three <laughs> children and we go out all the time. Our orders are always messed up. Guess what? You embrace it. What? What the okay. Do you just... I, really, they will let anyone who wanders up to the microphone say yeah. some shit. Just to pad out the fucking article. Spoiler alert, wings aren't important. They are not important at all. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, that's some that's some word salad. This one here is just like, this is really sad and unfortunate. I feel bad for society. What the fuck? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I understand his anger, but not his actions. I don't understand that. Five wings. He didn't have to change his name legally to get the wings, did he? (laughs) Because then I guess I'd be more upset. Like if I did a bunch of legal paperwork and they didn't give me my wings, I'd be mad. But I just I love how everybody in the, involved in this scenario, all the quotes in this are just like they're 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 pulling themselves in this little saga. They're all just like, man, I get it. This is this one time is... McDonald's ran out of chicken nuggets, and I called nine one one and threatened to kill everybody. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! So yeah, the first thing we we've learned this week is there are alternatives to smashing shit. While, yeah. while I'm sure smashing shit might feel satisfying in the moment, there yeah. is also that jail thing. We 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 generally smashing shit is not what and we. You're still not going to get your wings. So, so what's the point? Um, we've learned that doors in storm canals are not for you. No, they're for someone quite possibly serial killers but not you okay like unless you're hoping to turn into the world's grossest mermaid yeah uh, uh, um 
We've learned that if you ever hold such a high opinion of yourself, you believe the CEO of your franchise is, is just going to contact you one day. I don't want to rain. I, 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 I don't want to be the screen door on your submarine, but, but Can you imagine working under that manager. Gee, that's probably a fucking nightmare. The, <laughs> That that is that is an ego un just detached from all reality. They're gonna fucking call me one day, and I'm gonna own this fucking restaurant. I'm gonna own this fucking block. You watch. I'm gonna own five McDonald's because that that's they're, they're gonna see. I'm fucking. Um, <laughs> we've or we've learned that if you paint the, t the the toy gun, if you paint your real gun to look like a toy gun, <laughs> you're in a must murder someone situation at that point. Yeah. That's that's a little bit high on the escalation. Um we've learned that one free meal is not worth the paperwork to change your name. Fuck no. I I, I don't even I, I don't what is I don't and, and and finally this week we've learned everybody so you're going to have a bad day at work. Everybody's going to have a bad day at work. But someday, all of us are going to have the worst day at work ever. And in this person's case, that's accurate. And like, if you're having a bad day at work, just tell yourself, my bad day isn't going to completely fuck up global trade for weeks to come. And you'll feel better. I mean, yeah, you might have got the count wrong. Sure. Yeah. But on the other Some hand, dude might have smashed the cash register because you shorted his wings. On the other hand, you did not ruin global <laughs> commerce that day. Exactly. So give yourself a little pat on the back. And keep on trucking. Although I, I, I cut and I, it's weird, but I kind of love the fact that one person, one person. Don't finish the sentence. This what? is going on the internet. I love the fact that one person can ruin all of global commerce. See, now you might be an accessory. I love it though. That that just says so much about our, all our stupid little systems that are all it's tied all very, together. It's all very fragile. Yep. Just one person on a windy day and everything falls the fuck apart. We 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 always we go through life, we think, oh, we've got these checks and balances, and if we've got these contingencies, and no. We're all just flying around by the fucking seat of our pants, man. And we think everything's so fucking important. And then the wind is like, eat my asshole, humanity. And then your ship accidentally draws a dick. 